The wings of an airplane, by moving through the air, create lift, the force that makes it possible for an airplane to fly. But the movement of any object through the air creates another force, a force of resistance. The air resists the movement of the object. This force of resistance is called drag. So long as we're sheltered from the wind, we can walk about without noticing this force at all. But in a high wind, it is hard work pushing against the swiftly moving air. But we also find that the greater the frontal area we present, the greater is the resistance. Since we cannot see air, let's look at water, which behaves in a similar way. Oars are used to move a boat along. The water's resistance to the oar blade is quite big. Each stroke makes swirls in the water. If the blade is turned edge on, however, there is little resistance and hardly any swirls. Low drag, small swirls. High drag, big swirls. Swirls always show that something has disturbed the even flow of water or of air. The movement of air can be studied by blowing chemical smoke through a special apparatus. The airflow is then made visible, and when objects are placed in it, we can see what happens. Projection onto a screen makes this easier still. This flat plate, like the ore blade in the water, creates big swirls. If we change the flat plate for a ball of the same diameter, the smoke flow is smoother and the swirls are less violent. Using a streamlined shape developed from the ball, the tail added and the nose slightly altered, we find that the smoke flows smoothly over it without any swirls or turbulence. A balance can be used to weigh the drag of different objects. They can be fixed to a swinging arm, connected to a scale pan. Movement of the arm also moves a pointer, which shows when the object is in balance. A wind machine directed at the flat plate forces it back, raising the pointer. As we know, the flat plate causes a great deal of turbulence. Many weights are needed to balance its drag. The drag is high because the turbulence is great. We know that less turbulence is caused by a ball. To balance its drag, some of the weights can be taken off. The drag of the ball only holds up five weights. The drag is small because the turbulence is small. In the smoke test, we found that a streamlined shape, still of the same diameter, hardly disturbed the airflow at all. To make it balance, we can take off still more weights. The streamlined shape then has very little drag, less than one-fifth of the drag caused by the flat plate. 
This is because it allows the air to flow smoothly over it. The design of a modern airplane conforms to this shape. It has wings, a tailplane, and a fin shaped for their special task, engines, and a cabin. It also has an undercarriage, but with most airplanes, this is retracted during flight. All this means that an airplane cannot be perfectly streamlined. The drag caused by all those parts of an airplane which do not create lift is called parasite drag. The balance apparatus will tell us how this kind of drag alters with speed. Starting at wind speed one, a much lower speed than in the previous experiment, we find that one weight balances the flat plate. Double the wind speed, and we find that four weights are needed. Triple the original wind speed, and a total of nine weights are needed. Let's tabulate these results. At zero velocity, no drag. At velocity one, drag, one weight. At velocity two, drag, four weights. At velocity three, drag, nine weights. In fact, the drag goes up as the square of the velocity. Since parasite drag gets bigger so rapidly when speed increases, we can see how important it is to streamline a fast airplane. The wings of an airplane, which create its lift, also create a special kind of drag called induced drag. In section, the wing is much the same as a streamlined shape. The slight differences are due to its special job in creating lift. When its angle to the airflow is small, the wing creates little drag. But if we increase its angle, getting more lift, there will be a considerable increase in drag. This is not merely due to the fact that we have increased the frontal area by increasing the angle. Recall how the wing produces lift. Above the wing, the speeding up of the airflow causes reduced or low pressure, while under the wing, the slowing down of the airflow produces increased or high pressure. At the wing tips, the air tends to overcome this pressure difference. It flows on to the upper surface of the wing. This movement becomes a continuous rotary motion, the air curling over to form a string of vortices, which trail from each wing tip. A longer and narrower wing of the same area will produce less violent vortices. A streamer attached to the wing tip shows the swirling vortices and indicates that drag is present. 
But this form of drag is an inevitable result of the action of the wing in creating lift, in making it possible for the airplane to fly. At low speeds, the wing meets the air at a large angle, and induced drag is big. As speed is increased, the angle becomes much less. So, induced drag is lower at high speed. Oil is very sticky. It strongly resists the passage of anything through it, even when the movement is slow and it clings to surfaces. The stickiness of water is less noticeable. Air is still less sticky, but when it flows over the surfaces of an airplane, its stickiness does produce a certain amount of drag called skin friction. Skin friction takes place in the thin layer of air next to the airplane's surface. In some places, this layer is about as thick as a playing card, and it is called the boundary layer. What happens to the air in the boundary layer can be shown with playing cards. On a rough surface, the bottom card sticks most. The upper ones stick less and less. Air flowing over a rough surface reacts similarly. If the surface is smooth and polished, the card touching it sticks much less. The whole pack is dragged apart less. Air flowing over a polished surface does not stick so much. The particles in the water flowing around this streamlined shape illustrate skin friction. You can see how they tend to stick to its surface and are slowed down. Despite the thinness of the boundary layer, skin friction is very important in flight. If the airplane is large, like a modern airliner, if it flies very fast, or if its outside surfaces are rough, skin friction may account for a considerable proportion of the total drag. We know then that there are three kinds of drag hindering the flight of an airplane. First, Parasite drag from the fuselage, tail, engines, and all those parts which do not contribute towards the lift. Parasite drag can be kept down by ensuring that the airplane presents the smallest possible frontal area and by streamlining it. Second, induced drag from the wing. Since the wings are necessary for lift, we cannot avoid induced drag but we can lessen it by using a longer and narrower wing, where possible, to lessen the vortices. Finally, there is skin friction from the whole surface of the airplane. This becomes an important part of the total drag in fast, streamlined airplanes. That's one reason why airliners have such highly polished skins. Drag, then, is the force which resists the movement of an airplane through the air. It varies according to the speed, size, and shape of the aircraft. 